Step 3. Hiding client's information. Before we begin to discuss any particular schemes for blind quantum computation, we're going to talk more generally how we can hide client's information. So, consider the following scenario. The server does not know what state the client prepares. So maybe this is enough for the client to hide the information that they, they are trying to communicate to the server. In this case, we're considering the setting where the client prepares a state and sends it to the server, either directly or via teleportation. That's not really important for now. Let's say that the client prepares the state zero, so the plus one eigenstate of the Pauli Z matrix. And the server would like to know what the state is. Let's say that the server is malicious and tries to find out what states the client is communicating. So the server could measure in the Pauli X basis. If, if the server does that, the probability that it obtains a plus outcome is a half, and the probability that it obtains a minus outcome is also a half. You can check it by yourself very easily. Or maybe the server chooses to measure in the Pauli Z basis. In that case, the probabilities are very different. The probability of getting a zero is one, and the probability of getting a one is a zero. But this doesn't matter, because the client is sending only a single qubit meaning that the server learns nothing from a single measurement. However, this is not quite the case in when we try to delegate quantum computation. The client is trying to send many qubits to the server. What happens then? Well, the client prepares all of its qubits in the initial state 0, 0, 0, 0, and sends them to the server. The server doesn't really know what the initial state is, but because there are many copies of the qubit, the server can measure first one in the Pauli X basis, second one in the Pauli Z basis, then in the X basis again, maybe then in the Y basis. And by measuring all of these qubits, the server virtually runs full tomography and it reveals the client's unknown state. So this tr first try, just relying on the fact that the client doesn't communicate what state it's preparing to the server is not enough. The client has to do something more in order to hide its information. Let's go with try number two. The client randomly flips the prepared state. In other words, the client applies a one-time path. For every prepared qubit, the client needs to generate a uniformly random bit R. The bit's value determines whether we apply the flip or we do not. So this is how it works. The prepared state of the ith qubit is zero, sub, sub index i. Then the client generates the random bit ri, which is either 0 or 1. And remember, it's uniformly random. So the probability of generating a 0 is a half, and the probability of generating 1 is a half. That determines whether the uh, prepared state is flipped or not. We write it as follows. We write the Pauli x matrix, which flips, flips the state of the qubit, to the power of ri. When ri is 0, we don't flip. When ri is 1, we apply the Pauli X matrix and we change it to state one, as we can see over here. What does this look like from the server's point of view? Remember, the server does not know the value of the uniformly random bit that the client is generating. So what the server receives is the following state. With some probability, PR, the server, PR zero, the server receives the state zero and with the probability uh, PR1, it receives a 1. So it's receiving a mixed state. Not only that, we know what these probabilities of 0 and probability of 1 are. They're really just the probabilities that the client generated, um, the random bit Ri equals to 0 or Ri equals to 1. And this is where we see why we require these uh, probabilities to be equal to a half. If they are, then the state that the server sees is a maximally mixed state. With one, probability one half, it's a zero. And with probability one half, it's a one. We write it as identity over two. Now, the server can still run full tomography, but it's not going to reveal anything because the state that it's receiving from the client is fully and maximally mixed. 
So regardless of the state of the random bit that the client generates, the server always receives a maximally mixed state. Here's a sequence of such, um, such events. When the client generates the first qubit, it generates the first random bit. Let's say it's a zero, so the prepared state on the client side is zero. It sends it to the server, but what the server receives is a maximally mixed state. The second qubit is generated by the client, ri, uh, or R2 in this case is equal to zero, so the prepared state is also zero. But the server again receives a maximally mixed state. For the third qubit, even when Ri is equal to one, the prepared state is one, the server still receives a maximally mixed state and so on. So in this way we see that if the client performs a one-time path on its uh, generated states, it can completely hide the information from the server. Keep in mind, though, that the client's bit string must be uniformly random and it must be kept secret from the server. Otherwise, the scheme will not work. So this is a basic trick that we're going to see being used again and again in many uh, of the schemes for blind quantum computation. In the next step, we're going to talk about one of the first schemes.